Hey guys, how's it going? It's Baggins here, and today we're back with some more New World. Now, for most of you guys, the last time you played New World would have been the preview event back in August slash September of last year. This was available for everybody who pre-ordered the game and for a good chunk of people who signed up on their website. And in just a few short days from when this video goes out, there's going to be another preview event of sorts, this time labeled as a closed beta. If you guys are interested in getting access to that beta, I'm going to be giving away three copies of New World on the stream live as we play it through from July 20th. So a link to the stream in the description down below if you guys are interested in that. But back to the point of this video, since last year, a tremendous amount of change have been made to New World, and I thought something that would be useful for you guys is if we went through all of the patch notes on a month-by-month -month basis, and we listed the most important changes, in my opinion. Now we've got a lot to go through here, so let's get started with the month of October 2020. So some of the major changes that happened to the game after the preview event was they added another new weapon, the spear. So it's a two-handed spear. It has one skill tree that excels in throwing the spear, and the other skill tree is more for applying bleeds and slows, forms of CC. The spear scales off of dexterity and strength as a secondary. Another big change that we saw was ability cooldowns are now made to be weapon dependent. So you can swap between weapons and your cooldowns won't be shared between the two of them. This actually makes a pretty huge uh, impact to the game. It's going to be one of the first things I think a lot of people notice if you played in the preview event and then you come into this closed beta. During this month, there was also a threat system added to the game. It's pretty basic at this form, but it gives us the idea that we're going to start to uh, see tanks appear in New World with people now being able to generate threat against specific enemies. Some other pretty big changes that we've seen uh, revolving around experience is changes to mob farming. So mob farming is now much less efficient in terms of getting experience. Armor, weapons, gear in general now requires specific levels. So it might be like level 54 in order to use a particular earring rather than previously where it was like tiers, like tier four was unlocked at 40, tier five was unlocked at 50. Instead now tier five can scale anywhere from 50 all the way up to 60. There was also a big change to gems where they now convert damage types to different types. So you can have arcane damage applied to your weapon or nature damage. Another interesting thing about the gems is they also scale off of a particular stat as well. So if you are heavily specced into intelligence, you could slot an intelligence gem into your sword. It would convert 50% of the damage of the sword into fire damage but it scales based off of your intelligence. There's a bunch of different gems like this now in the game. Uh, if you guys want a bit more of an in-depth dive into this, I suggest you go watch some Medieval's video. I'll put a link to that in the description down below, timestamped where he talks about the gems. And finally, the focus stat now no longer provides cooldown reduction. Instead, it is specifically for the life staff and it's going to affect the amount of healing that your life staff does. In November of 2020, another region was added to the game. This is an end game region called Requater, so it's for level 58 plus. So maybe you could do your last few levels here in Requater. It's also going to be one of the best places for fishing, which is another thing that was added to the game. Fishing is going to be used for completing some quests, uh, some food recipes, you know, just the standard stuff that you would expect fishing to be used for. In this patch, healing and blocking were also made to generate threat. So uh, healers in the back are now going to be generating threat like you would expect in a lot of other MMOs. And we've also seen our first taunt added to the game in the form of shield bash so we you know slowly over time you can see from these patch notes new world becoming more and more like your standard MMORPG. Elite enemies can also now be signed affixes, so you can kind of think of this a bit like Diablo, where if you get into later runs, they'll have uh, different affixes under their name, so that could be Exploding, or uh, Frost, which is like a slow aura, so everybody that comes around them uh, is slow. Uh, yeah, there's now up to three affixes on some particular elite enemies. Healing is also made easier in this patch with a new lock-on system, so you can now scroll wheel between your friendlies to decide who you want to apply the heal to. And finally, each weapon now has a base chance to crit from 3 to 5%. However, you can modify this through various traits and perks, buffs, etc. if you want to go into more of a crit build. In December of 2020, we saw another new weapon get added to the game, the Great Axe. So this is a two-handed axe. Uh, it has one skill tree for just doing a lot of damage. The other skill tree is more CC oriented, has a lot of uh, pulls to pull big groups in, and the Great Axe only scales off of strength. During December, we also saw duels added to the game, so you can now duel somebody. This is like a friendly PvP match, basically. You can initiate a duel by interacting with the other player. They have a chance to accept the duel or not. It can go from a 1v1 up to a 5v5, so groups can duel other groups. It's worth noting that if uh, outside interference happens in the group, like somebody pulls a mob, then uh, that will end the duel. 
Around this time, we also got the tower shield added to the game as well. This is a really big chonka of a shield. It provides the biggest block chance, but it also has the biggest weight and movement restrictions out of all the shields as well. And one of the biggest changes in the December patch notes was that stagger has been removed from the game. Now, if you played in the preview event, uh, you will be familiar with the stagger system. A lot of people complained about it, basically allowing you to get stun locked. Now, Amazon did try a few different things to uh, sort of mitigate the stagger system, but in the end, it seems like they've ultimately gone with the decision to remove it. Uh, there is some fears that this will make the combat quite floaty, like in Elder Scrolls Online. But if you guys want a bit of a deeper dive into this, I'll put a link to a specific video about the stagger system and its removal in the description down below. Now, moving on to 2021, we do have the January patch. This was a pretty big patch and we saw a major overhaul to the crafting system now uh, lots more items were added that you can craft including a lot of end game armor weapons jewelry stuff like that on top of this the life skills now cap at 200 so there is some ceiling to how far you can push your crafting and your gathering during january we also saw the rapier weapon added as well this is a one-handed sword that has a skill tree that focuses on applying bleeds and then removing them for big chunks of damage and the other side of the tree is like evasion counter attacking and just you know being a bit Bit fancy. The rapier scales off of dexterity as a primary and its secondary is intelligence, so potentially a good pickup for some spellcasters out there. During this patch, food was also made into two separate categories, so you have buff food, uh, which applies buffs, and then you have recovery food, which is good for health and mana regeneration. Enemies that are also six or more levels above you from January onwards, it was also made that they would instantly kill you if your health hits zero rather than down you, so uh, trying to tag on to a high level group that's like clearing out portals or trying to do quests, it's a lot more dangerous for low level players to be in high level areas now. Another pretty huge change came in January as well in the form of weapon slots going down from 3 to 2. Uh, probably a, as a way to counter people just choosing two of their favorite weapons and then the life staff or two of their favorite weapons and the fire staff, you know, whatever's considered matter at the time. You have to be a bit more specific with what your build is going to do now as you've only got those two weapon slots. On top of this, we also now have it that you can move while doing ranged attacks. So ranged DPS can now be on the move as they pump out those auto attacks. And finally, full XP is no longer awarded to every member of a group. It's now a percentage. So it isn't just strictly better to be in a group all the the time because obviously during the preview event you may as well just been a group to kill anything because you're still going to get the full amount of xp and you're most likely going to kill it a lot faster as a group so there was pretty much no reason to not be in a group whereas now there at least is a split penalty and that the xp is divided amongst the group in february of 2021 we didn't see many changes to new world as this was originally going to be when the game was going to come out or is going to come out around this time in spring this is probably for the best in my opinion as uh, what you're going to see from the following patch notes after this month is a tremendous amount of stuff being added into the game but during february we did get to see our first teasers at some dungeons another new zone and the uh, outpost rush 20 versus 20 pvp mode moving into march of 2021 we do get to see that full extent of the new zone it's called ebb and scale reach and it's another kind of end game zone it's for people who are 50 plus during this time, we also got to see the first two dungeons being revealed. The first one is called Amreen Excavation. It's for people levels 25 and up. I'll put a link to that in the uh, description down below. It is kind of like the starter dungeon in New World. And then we also got to see one of the end game dungeons as well called the Garden of Genesis. From the patch notes and from what we can deduce, it seems like dungeons have a pattern so far and that each one has a sort of puzzle mechanic to it. And you also have two bosses to clear out as well. There's also a bunch of quests associated with completing dungeons or expeditions as they call them. And there's a lot of loot to be gained from killing bosses as well. So yeah, just your dungeon grind that you would expect in an MMO. Next up, we have Outpost Rush being added. As I mentioned in February, this is a 20 versus 20 end game PVP instanced event. So you can sign up for Outpost Rush at any fact representative within any settlement and that will put you in the queue and once there are 39 other players in the queue you'll be popped into outpost rush it kind of plays a bit like ashran from world of warcraft if you guys are interested i'll put a link to the full outpost rush breakdown the outpost rush 101 video in the description down below during march we also saw quests being added to the game for people who are level 40 and over to craft rare and powerful uh, weapons and armor so weapons and armor that are named like specifically like kind of like artifacts or relics but not quite uh they're not going to be some of the best stuff in the game but it's definitely going to be worth going for these when you get to level 40 and over they also require no life skill as well that you just have to go gather the materials and then you can craft them at a station so yeah pretty cool stuff pretty nice feature added to the game a change was made that enemies now have to be 10 levels or higher to insta kill you now so if you're level 50 and you're fighting a level 60 enemy 
it will now instantly kill you rather than downing you. And they also have an increased aggro range and extra damage and all the other spooky stuff as well. So yeah, it's now 10 levels above. On top of this, there was a change made at the other end of the spectrum. So if you're killing a creature that is much weaker than you, uh, you'll get less XP. So 40% less XP for creatures that are 10 to 19 levels below you. And then if they're 20 levels below you, you'll be getting 80% less XP. We also had a big change to the game where all equipable items are now either bind on equip or bind on pickup, which made a pretty big change to New World's economy when it comes to weapons and armor. It's now going to be uh, fresh stuff that you don't want to use to give to other people rather than like recycling everything and having it being distributed amongst the whole server. In March, pretty big changes were made to the inventory UI as well, which makes it much easier to see your character. And generally, I just think this is a better layout for the way that the gear looks, as you can see on the screen here. A change to equip loads is also made during this patch, which makes it so that if you wear a full set of light armor or you have a, a light load, uh, you'll have a 20% damage bonus. Whereas if you're wearing a medium load, you'll get a 10% damage bonus but also a 10% increase to stuns, slows, and roots. And then finally, a heavy load gives you no damage bonus, but you do get a 20% increase to stuns, slows, and roots. On top of this, the dodge roll benefit still exists for light armor in that if you have a light load, you can uh, dodge roll, whereas the medium and heavy, you just do like a little side shuffle. Finally, the last stuff that happened in the March patch was a huge overhaul for all of the weapons in the game. There was a giant balance patch made. It's more than I can list. It would make the video another 30 minutes longer. But if you do want to see, again, links to the patch notes in the description down below. But yeah, pretty much every single mastery tree, every single ability, every single weapon had a change made during the March 2021 patch. In April of 2021, we had another massive patch. Uh, the Ice Gauntlet weapon is now added to the game. It has one skill tree that focuses on damage and area denial. The other skill tree focuses on crowd control, protection, and a deployable turret. This is a weapon that scales only off of intelligence. We also saw faction control points added to the game. So these are points placed within forts, which you have to PVP flag to go and capture. If you stand in the capture point for long enough, it will flip into control for your particular faction, uh, which will then give a 5% increase in experience and a 20% increase in influence for your territory within that region. On top of this, there are also unique global buffs. So for the whole map applied to everybody within your faction, if you flip control of that fort, which can be stuff like uh, cheaper fast travel, uh, reduced rate of taxes, increased experience from exhibitions, and a bunch of other stuff. We also saw another two dungeons added uh, during April, the Lazarus Instrumentality, which is a end game dungeon for 60 plus. And we have the Dynasty Shipyard, which is for 50 plus ish, maybe 55. And that's in the ebb and scale reach region again the dungeons have the whole system of two bosses a puzzle etc we also saw an extensive achievement system added in april so there's now achievements which you can get in new world they can be tracked and they're also shared account wide you can also now transfer items between different storage sheds if your faction owns both of them but it does cost a coin fee so you will have to pay gold but again if your faction controls two different points on two different areas of the map you can now you know, move stuff in your storage between them. During April, we also saw Carnelian gems added to the game. So this is something from uh, the stone cutting life skill. If you slot a Carnelian gem into your weapon, it will activate taunt abilities on your weapon. Uh, currently, there are seven in the game at this particular patch. A small change, but also something that makes a pretty big impact on gameplay is that ranged attacks now go through players. And also attributes now get a threshold bonus for every 50 points you invest into them. For example, 150 points into focus will give you a plus 20% healing output and also a 10% decrease in the weight of fishing items. So fantastic stuff there. And the last major change we saw in April was a trading system getting added to the game, which allows you to trade up to five items and also coin to other players. There is a lock-in and confirm step as a countermeasure to prevent people swindling you. Moving on to May 2021, we have another two dungeons added to the game. Shattered Obelisk is for level 35 and up players. And then we have the Depths, which is for level 45 and up players. Again, they both contain two bosses. They both have quests. They both give you loot for finishing the dungeon. So just now I think we have five or six dungeons in the game. So a good amount of dungeons being added to New World at this point. We also now have titles in the game. Most of them are unlocked from completing achievements and you can slot them into your character name so people can see the title above your character, either to the left or right of your name. Some of them are account bound and some of them are character specific. During May, we also see fast travel points being added to the game, also known as Azoth Shrines. 
Uh, they're going to be dotted around the map in various locations. Once you discover one, or you walk into the range of it, you can fast travel from settlements, outposts, or other shrines. Like with other fast travel, it gets more expensive the further you are from it and the more that you're carrying. There was also a change made to gold. It now caps at 500,000 per individual and 5 million for a company. And changes were also made to gold farming, so it's no longer as efficient to be farming mobs for gold. There's only a percent chance you'll get gold from mobs. So questing now becomes the primary source of gaining gold in the game. In May, we also see more changes being made to XP. The biggest changes being that you'll get a 200% increase in your first three faction missions you do every day, and you no longer get a 10% gain in XP for being PvP flagged. We also saw the removal of the sack being dropped on the ground. So if you guys played in the preview event, you'll remember that if you wanted to trade something to another player, you like dropped your items into a bag on the ground. Now it's all just done through the trade system. You can still dump stuff on the ground, but it's just for you to see. So I guess it's probably a way to like counter people leaving small bags around towns, you know, just dropping one arrow, moving, dropping one arrow, moving. Uh, yeah, the the gone are the days of seeing bags on the ground in New World. The last couple changes that happened during May, we saw tuning orbs added into the game. These are kind of like keys to get into dungeons. You can get those from quests and also from crafting via stone cutting. And finally, Another big change in May and maybe one of the more controversial parts of New World's history so far is we also saw the in-game store get announced. So the cash shop store, the premium store, uh, Amazon stated that initially we'll only see cosmetic stuff for sale like dyes and outfits. But later on into 2022, we may see some quality of life boosts like uh, rested XP, fast travel stuff and, and things like that. So yeah, cash up was in May of 2021. And then finally, the most recent month, we have June. Not so many changes were made in June, uh, but still some stuff that makes a pretty big impact to the game. So you can now have up to 100 people in your company, which is your guild, uh, up from 50. We saw even more experience changes being made. During the first part of the June patch, they increased the amount of XP to level past level 7 by 40%. So it takes 40% longer to level, uh, but then in the June part 2 patch they reduced it by 20% So overall it now takes 20% longer to level after level 7 in the June patch They also heavily expanded the character creation options. So there's a lot more colors for hair uh, Hairstyles facial appearance all of that stuff And we also know that we're gonna be able to get two character slots per region So you'll be able to have your main and one alt on every region in new world one of the biggest changes we saw come out of the June patch was the change to the movement slash sprint system. So sprinting is now done automatically. You don't need to hold down the shift key anymore. In fact, shift is now used as a dodge button. Space is now for jump by default and jumping doesn't cost any stamina. Stamina also regenerates while you're sprinting. If you fire off an attack or an ability, you'll have to wait one and a half seconds until your character begins sprinting. And if you're hit by somebody's attack, you'll have to wait two seconds until you can start sprinting. So these are pretty big changes for PvP, uh, PvE. You know, if you're a squishy DPS or healer in the back line and somebody manages to connect an attack with you, it's going to be two seconds until you can start sprinting. And if you use an ability to heal yourself, it's going to be another one and a half seconds until you can start sprinting. So yeah, this is a pretty big change to the game. Tanking was also made quite a lot more challenging in this patch as stamina no longer regenerates while you're blocking and there's a one second delay for the regeneration of your stamina after you release a block. It also takes three seconds to reset your stamina up from 1.5 seconds and if you lose all your stamina while blocking so your block gets broken you're not going to be able to dodge all block for another three seconds so tanks have to be a lot more careful and a lot more wary about how they manage their stamina now. And finally the last couple changes that happened in the June patch a changes were made to the war declarations so if you want to declare war on a particular territory, you have to contribute at least 10% to the sort of influence overflowing, you know, the thing that puts them into conflict. So your company has to uh, complete a, you know, a fairly sizable amount of faction missions if they want to actually be the ones that declare war and take over the territory. So it's not as much random assignment anymore now. And then finally, the last change that was made in June, probably to a lot of people's relief, is that PvP was made a bit more impactful, as you'll get more experience when you get a PvP kill in the open world, you'll get more loot as well, and you'll lose less durability on your gear if you are the one that loses the fight in PvP. 
So that is all the changes that happened in New World from the preview event up until now. Again, there might be even more changes before the 20th of July beta happens. We'll have to keep our eyes peeled for those. If there is, you bet your biscuits will be making a video on it. And once again, guys, obviously I'm going to be streaming a lot of the New World beta. So if you want to come see what it looks like, you want to come ask some questions, maybe you want to clear some dungeons together, level up. I'll put a link to the stream in the description down below. But yeah, this has been a pretty long video. So we're going to wrap this one up here. If you guys enjoyed this one, make sure you go ahead and click that like button subscribe for more and i'll see you guys all in the next one